we appear to be on the road. So Caitlin's got uh, this guy who shot Michael Dean. Right. So the officer who got uh, arrested, or, or the officer who shot Michael Dean, uh, uh, got you know finally arrested, but only for manslaughter. Um, so what happened is Michael Dean was riding in his car, and uh, he didn't pull over right away. And for that terrible crime, um, this officer um, shot him to death. But that's not the recent one. That was one from last year. That's from last year, right? I just wanted to remind people of this. Right, but he got. Right. So he got arrested for manslaughter, uh -huh. but he just got arrested. No, he got arrested in February. Yep. Did he actually get convicted or anything? Not yet. We're still waiting to hear. Yep, yep. Well, that would be normal. I mean, that's why I know one thing I've heard a lot about is there are special laws exempting police uh -huh. from prosecution for violence that make it, in fact, extremely difficult to punish them in court. And there's right. stuff to talk about. Well, we'll immunity. Yeah, yeah I, I, I wonder if it, if, if we if we didn't have those laws, if it would have been harder for this police to pull a firearm, a, a lethal weapon, onto a, a suspect where he had no idea if if this person was violent or not. In fact, by statistically, not, this person would have been nonviolent. No, I think certainly uh, it would help, but that would require reform, and you know it's. Uh, yeah, I think that's I, I, you know, to you. I, I, I've actually heard an argument, surprisingly, from a uh, conservative Republican judge uh, that not only should there not be qualified immunity, but that it should be uh, there should be harsher penalties for um, law enforcement because they're uh, they occupy a position of trust, and I agree with that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean it seems clear. But uh, there's certainly a, uh, the right wing is very much on the other side. Although well, not everybody. That, that's what surprised me was that uh, that opinion was expressed by a, a, right, a pretty, pretty hardcore right winger judge. Well, there used to be a conservative arm that was actually against government controlling people. But yeah. what happened is the Republican Party, since Trump got in, has veered off into crazy town. And there's old fashioned conservatives like George Will sitting here saying, wait a minute, there are things we believe in, like balance the budget and a small government and not intruding in your private rights that have just been trampled underfoot by this so-called Republican Party. So, I mean, it's, a, we're, it's very strange, but American conservatives are sort of left standing alone wondering what happened with no party anymore. And the other thing I think it's important about Caitlin's story is that I hear people saying, well, uh, you know, oh, it's just, uh, I've, I've heard some really crazy stuff where it's like, oh, every time a, a black person gets killed, we have riots, which is patently untrue. Or, you know, what is it about this guy that it just happened and now we're, we're having these riots? Well, the thing that's important about this to remember is that this is an ongoing systemic problem. It's not like a one-off. This. Oh, yeah. You know, so... And I was surprised at a conservative guy that had previously seemed kind of reasonable saying that, well, you know, they're just making it up. There's, in fact, no issue with black people being policed differently than uh, than white people in America. That just doesn't happen. And I'm like, wow, we're really on a different worlds there. Anyway, I've got a tech story. I got a few of them. Um, but I, this one caught my attention because I just wrote this up a couple months ago for uh, a uh, Python 3 attack. So what these guys did is they found that the online vCloud tool is uh, got simple code injection, which is delightful. So when you type in a host name of seven star seven with these print uh, curly braces and dollar sign, which is the uh, one of the many ways to inject code, it evaluates the code. And that means you can just type in the right commands and take over the box. That's bloody awesome. And uh, I was, uh, trying this, and when I've, I've been writing a Rust GTF to show all the things that Rust prevents, and Rust does, of course, not prevent this. You can have command injection in Rust, because it's not a memory corruption. It's a higher level kind of error. But anyway, it's, uh, that keeps coming back. And this one apparently goes through Java, so you can inject Java there. The one I know, you inject Python 3 in there. But anyway, it's a cute um, form of weakness. And uh, so I guess it's been patched. Yep. Anyway, 
So that's vSphere. And here we got Liz's with the Chicago police. Yeah, so uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, somebody took over the uh, radio scanners over the weekend and they jammed it and they were uh, playing their own um, messages and uh, occasionally some uh, gangster rap. Uh, and while this, I did find this uh, to be highly amusing, uh, I think it's important to um, I think it's important to mention that doing this is really dangerous and you shouldn't do it uh, just because you could prevent somebody from getting an ambulance when they need it or um, yeah. something serious like that. So even though it's pretty pretty darn woolsey, don't do it. Is that uh, what this video is? Also FTC time, yes. Yes, that is what that video is. So uh, let's see a little bit of what they did. Um, HeyJackass.com. No, it's HeyJackass.com. Oh. Okay. So the police are apparently using unencrypted radio? Uh, yeah, they, even though, even though they are, and even if they are using, uh, encryption, a lot of the times it's, uh, only done through, uh, weak means or the other thing that they often do is they will, uh, trunk multiple digital signals together as a means of ob obfuscation, but, uh, it's possible to reverse that, obviously, so. Yeah, and I would think just stealing a police radio would be a simple way to gain the ability to broadcast stuff yeah. and um I, I i mean i i don't condone um uh, uh broadcasting on police frequencies however if you do want to listen in on them it is extremely trivial with a 20 dollar sdr yep yes yep yep i'm all right. friends used to have a police scanner and it was uh good fun yep yeah yeah all right well that's that's uh common thing so this one i thought was uh not too surprising <laughs> remember that people don't actually change their passwords when they should yeah that's that's exactly my same sentiment of oh oh there's a breach okay and they just keep the same password only a third of them i might have guessed a bigger number than that yeah me too yeah um, most people don't change it they just yeah. shrug and move on I had to really fight a family member who got compromised to change their passwords after, and he got really upset about it. And I'm just like, well, you're asking me how not to get hacked again. <laughs> Step yeah. one is to change the accounts to the passes of the passwords to the accounts that got hacked. And he, that, that just really, um, that just Deal really breaker. defeated him. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, like me, I've got the non-technical family members. And the thing is, passwords are so annoying and so hard to find and so hard to write down somewhere. I think what people really need to do is start using password managers. And that was, oh. my, that was my suggestion. He didn't want to do that either. But <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't want to do it either. The, the time when I got so fed up with all my stupid Word documents and everything all over the place where I could never find the right one with the password. I said, well, I ought to just bite the bullet and start using a password manager. And it's once you get over it, the first jump, it's really nice. Now I love it. Yeah. It's like when people first started using computers and everyone was like, why is this intruding on my space? And then they figured out, oh, this is, this is not so bad. Well, yeah. it, it's got a good side and a bad side. But yeah, I think, I think we ought to just regard password managers as an essential part of using a computer. People should think of it as like a keyboard. You just don't even pretend that you can use your computer without one. Anyway. On a different note, yeah, but I guess eh, it's, it's just the thing of the times. So, so, yeah, we do have some power, uh, some power, some internet outages, and interestingly enough, Comcast has the most outages in the Bay. Oh, with AT and T second, Spectrum pretty much focused on San Francisco and Fremont, and Verizon having a very few spots. So I, I suspect. I wonder what's going on. I wonder if it's got to do with the weather or the protest or something. It might be a little more everything. But wire tapping. Yeah, Spectrum. Spectrum has the highest downtime in San Francisco itself. Mm -hmm. Comcast is scattered around because it's it's affecting our summer camps. Oh, that's true. It would. You guys are using uh, internet connections all over the place. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 
that's the problem with online teaching too. They say the problem is a lot of students don't really have a good internet or a good computer at home. So they're just totally hosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this happened back in March, uh, but I think okay. it's important to bring up again. Um, so the, the, what happened is the, there was this guy, um, his name is, or was Christopher Whitfield. Mm -hmm. um, and all he did was rob a, a convenience store essentially for food and was running away when a cop shot him, murdered him. That's yep. yeah. And um, being suspect. That, yeah. I thought that was severely illegal. It, it is severely illegal. Um, and a grand jury cleared the, the deputy. Didn't, it, the deputy is, is free. Yeah, even I think though, this is, ever since the Rodney King thing, I think this is the really hard thing. And I heard lawyers talking about this. The problem is, it's obviously a crime. You want the guy to go to jail. But the fact is, the laws are not there. Right. Yeah, but summary executions for stealing food. I mean, where, how, how did we get here? Well, we got here by... I remember most of my life, every president has run on a tough on crime platform. Well, that's so, working out well. Well, so they pass all these laws, <laughs> but that's the point. Once you pass a bunch of laws, this is why Mitch McConnell is currently pressuring Republican judges to retire so they can force, they can put in younger, more conservative judges so they can continue to push through laws like this because um, they are very determined to maintain this, uh, this right wing position. And further right. as much as possible. In San Francisco, we have essentially like nothing gets punished. You can just steal right. whatever you want. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have a uh, summary execution for stealing some chicken. So we do. How, how is there not some way to get like a happy medium here? Well, there may be no happy medium. And that's why I hear more people talking about secession. I mean, maybe we shouldn't all try to be one country. I've thought about this many times. And basically what's happening here is um, California and the blue states are being like an anchor holding the red states from forming the apartheid nation they want and um, funding them since they mostly run in the red and the money comes from here. And if we were to split, then we could have like a, a European utopia here and they could have a, a, a right wing uh, apartheid state there. And maybe it is more moral to be joined at the hip to hold them back from doing what they really want to do down there. What happens to all the poor people who can't move out of the apartheid? Well, they're just, just going to suffer. Well, that's the point. By staying connected, it is possible for them to leave and move to the blue states. If we were to actually sever the border, then they would, of course, close their border and trap them in there and reinstitute slavery or something. Yeah. And uh, it's, so it's, it's a difficult issue. Holding the whole nation together creates a sort of average where everybody is frustrated. Splitting it into smaller chunks lets everybody go where they want to go. That's why it's what the breakup of the EU is very similar. I would just like to see less extreme extremism. I mean, that seems like a good start. Well, it's, then you'd have to change the incentives. And, 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 also, and also keep in mind, Liz, that extremism is built into our DNA. Like um, America is a, a fundamentally racist country with racist roots. And there's no, um, and, and that in itself is extremely um, tough to change. Not tough to change, but just politically just off the walls extremist. Yeah, this is what um, Gandhi and other people said. I mean, America suffers from a gigantic wound of slavery that just keeps coming back in one way or another. We've got a terrible problem and you can't fix it overnight and you can't fix it in one generation or with one law. And we just continue fighting the civil war over and over and over and over. And there's no simple solution. It's going to take a long time to grow out of it. Yeah. 400 years and we're still growing out of it. Oh, yeah. Well, Wait, we, did you say 100? No, four. Oh, yeah. 400. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say like that. We, we clearly long. haven't fixed it yet. A lot of people are still on the other side. That's why the latest... Um, uh, thing from the uh, Lincoln Project was a video about the Confederate flag and all the Trump supporters showing up the Confederate flag everywhere and how these guys are not only wrong, but they were losers. And the guy that put it up has said, I got more death threats than ever last night from angry Confederates. But I mean, the point is we, we're still fighting the Civil War. And Trump is very much on the Confederate side of the Civil War because of Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, the the 
the Republican Party originally was against the Democrats that wanted slavery, and the Republicans wanted to free the slaves, but Richard Nixon moved to the Southern strategy and decided to move the Republican Party over to white supremacy and racism to get more support from the South, and we're still there. George Bush tried to move it back, but Donald Trump moved it back where Nixon had it, where it's a, it's a Southern Christian white uh, pro-slavery party. And uh, I think it'll probably spring back because I think after Trump leaves, they're going to find that the Trump replacements like Cotton can't possibly hypnotize people the way he does and his children can't do it. And the Republicans will have to move back to a sort of more sane path or their party will come to an end. I find it very discouraging that more people aren't being like, what the hell, this even this guy is insane and this is wrong. I find it very discouraging that so many people are just going along with this. Well, I think this, this new thing of deploying the military to kill Americans without the consent of the states might possibly move some Republicans away from him. Uh, I will see. But it really is, uh, there must be some point when Trump's base will say they've had enough. Or so we all wish. Yeah. We've well, been saying next... that since the beginning. Yeah, like yeah. what's it to take at this point? What does it take the military in front of your in front of your house in order to go? Maybe this is a bad idea. Like what? Why well, is that the extreme? Well, the fundamental was... the fundamental principle of democracy is that there is a limit to how far you can abuse the people before they will actually vote you out of office. So, uh, if if nothing will stop him, then democracy will fail. Well, and it's just a it's a real. I see a lot of real fundamental logical inconsistencies and cognitive dissonance happening like you know with uh with the brianna taylor case how uh they broke into these people's house without announcement uh they had no idea who was coming in this guy has a legally uh owned and licensed firearm and, and shoots at the intruders not knowing they're cops and they uh arrest the guy you know, they've since released him, but I'm like, where's the NRA now? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. If this yeah. was a white guy, they would be saying, oh, he was yep. well within his rights to protect his home, and yep. it's a Kentucky's a castle doctrine state and everything else. Nothing, just crickets. Right. Well, I mean, the, the Second Amendment historically has been about white people owning guns to point at black people. Yeah. Yeah, it's the deep racism. I mean, the there are no actual, this is what I think Trump revealed about Republican Party. There are, in fact, no principles. They don't care about civil rights or small government or balancing a budget or anything. It's just racism. That's his yeah, only I mean, product. Like, what, uh, a week or two ago, all the, all the protests were A-OK -okay because it, well, they were protesting against yeah. the tyranny of uh, quarantine. Yeah, I, th I thought yeah, now we must crack down on the protesters. Well, I remember when they had the armed anti-vaccine mobs um, going to take over like the, the capital in Michigan, they said, boy, the liberals are saying, you know, if those were black people, they'd call out the army. And everyone said, oh, you're just exaggerating. And then the black people did something much milder and they totally freaked out. It's, it's uh, like say, Trump is like a cartoon of extremes. Anyway. So the non is back. This is what we need, anonymous. For I was just saying the other day. I wonder what happened to anonymous. Uh, <laughs> we wonder why we haven't heard from them or any other hackers recently. And then within 24 hours, they came out of hibernation. So of course, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you know, things are serious when when uh, anonymous comes back out of hibernation. So they DDoSed something, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, hopefully, I'm, I'm, what I'm really hoping is that uh, somebody in Anonymous bought those um, data dumps from uh, the celebrity lawyer a couple weeks ago, but we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. No, who knows what will happen. Yeah, so they, they DDoSed a website and put out a fake data breach and stuff. You know, this is kind of the classic thing. Anonymous is like one 12-year-old in their parents' basement or something. But anyway. Exactly. Right now, right now it's, no, it's nothing too exciting that they're doing, but uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully they'll step it up. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Hopefully this is just their start. Yeah, like they're yeah, just getting I, for, just for the record, I, I do not support illegal hacking activities. 
Yeah, man, I don't either. I, I, never, I don't either. I don't either. Uh, I never thought much of anonymous, but it's better than like actually going out in the street and looting a business, <laughs> I guess. Well, I, I mean, I can't, I can't cast judgment on what the right way to go about this is because I really don't know anymore. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I just think it's interesting. Um, I just think it's interesting that it's, uh, it's, they've come out of, of hibernation again. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, well, I mean, these things are symptoms. When your society is upset enough, then you start having riots and looting and yeah. civil disobedience and craziness all around. It means people are very desperate, which I think largely is the coronavirus, really. I mean, people have lost their jobs and they're trapped at home. And so they're like angry and it just takes a spark. Well, I mean, it's a multi, I, I feel like it's a multi, uh, you know, our, the the uh, current disaster that we're living in is is a multi splendored thing. I mean, it feels like an episode of Black Mirror at this point. So um, yeah. this is just sort of sort of just you know the perfect added touch to that. Like I'm waiting for the alien. Yeah. 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 George, George Floyd's death was just the spark that lit the gasoline tanker. Yeah, it was. Yeah, everybody's but, upset. Everybody, uh, all this has been building up. Yeah. And the coronavirus just just exposed more and more and then just caused more people to, to get to that boiling point and then that death was just and, well, and yeah I, and we're at the point now too where so many people are really uh hurting um financially and in so many other ways you know no forget forget the financial things i mean africans americans brown people and all minorities in our country have been suffering economically for for decades uh, hundreds of years uh, this is nothing new. Um, currently, more than half of all African Americans are unemployed in our country. Um, what what I think is really angering and really upsetting is that um, when the um, when the virus started spreading, uh, there was a large number of Republicans and people in power who were saying, "You know, we're going to sacrifice your life. We're going to sacrifice." Um, older people's lives for the economy. I mean, and that and that's the really upsetting thing is it's not that you know people are, are just poor. That that's not enough. Um, that our leaders have made it very clear that that a lot of our lives don't matter. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm I'm just saying it's a combination of these things. Like they're all adding up together to. Uh... Right, the, the the whole oppression against uh, people of color, like yeah, that's that's been around. That is our life every day. Like I still get talked down, and look well, at how far I've gone. But yeah, I, I still get talked down all the time. So it's not get what all the time. Get talked down to. Yeah, talked down to. Oh, yeah. Discredited. Yeah, discredited. Like you know this. What are you doing? You're not. You don't belong at our table. Like what are you talking about? What table don't you belong at? Oh, I've been, huh? yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a challenge moving up and it's, really, yeah. Are you, are you, I didn't think you were black. Are you, I mean, I don't get it. What's, what's going on? Are you in some disfavored group? He's Latino. I mean, oh, pretty I, much. Know that. I, I have no clue about this stuff. I'm pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Cla Sam, Sam had a classic case of, of uh, high, high functioning autism. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, my dad, my dad loved Archie Bunker. He was racist as hell. And so I went to like first grade and he came home and, and I asked him, what did you do? I said, oh, I made friends with this guy. Uh, and I said, what's his name? He's Tom. He said, well, what is he? I said, what do you mean? Well, what is he? Is he like a Jew or, or Irish or what? And I said, well, I don't know. Well, how would you tell? And then he starts saying, well, the Jews have the big noses. And mom said, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't teach him that. And I never learned it. So I, I got no clue, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah people people of color uh women um pretty much continually discredited in the uh technical industry I know about women uh, yep living. as a matter of fact i know about latinos too especially in the age of trump my latino students often say when i say you know trump is picking on black people they say he's picking on latinos too and i said well yes he is <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and it's uh, there's just this implicit assumption that you don't know what you're talking about or that yep. you're electricity higher Yep, yep, yep. So, oh, well, yeah, 
Anyway, one thing I think is this is very much like the time at the Vietnam War, which I don't think any of you were old enough to live through, but it was very much like this. Riots in the street, people madder than hell, a right wing that just couldn't care less and said what we have to do, like Ronald Reagan, is send in more tear gas and troops and rubber bullets and just force them to shut up again. And people I, I, were like so angry, they really wouldn't shut up. You know, for the first time, I actually saw real rubber bullets people have picked up. I don't think we should call them rubber bullets anymore. No. What do you call them? Uh, 40 millimeters rounds. Yeah. Okay. I remember picking them up. I had them shot at me. Um, it's, yeah. it's somebody, there's a picture of somebody who opened one of those rubber bullets and there is metal inside. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that, but I remember it was surprisingly heavy and stiffer than I thought it should be. So yeah. uh, now they got something called pepper rounds, which they didn't have when I was in these protests. So that must be fun. Yeah, a senator got hit by those. Yeah, I saw a couple of people lost their eye from the rubber bullets. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, they're they're not safe. They're not just little rubber things that you go ow ow, you know, and walk away. No, they're they're big slugs. They yeah, they're basically know, bullets. They're too big to be. Lost, it yeah, people, not that safe either, I guess. People lost eyes from the uh, marker rounds that they're they they fire out these sponge these sponge bullets, uh, which sound totally innocent or whatever, but they're not. They're sponge bullets that are either soaked in dye or some kind of chemical irritant like pepper spray and uh, multiple people have lost their eye because of that and one thing that's pretty messed up was i saw a video of um it was either national guard or police that was unclear uh moving through um minnesota during um after at curfew hours and and they had explicitly said you can be outside on your own property after curfew and these people were sitting on their porch yeah. And, oh, yeah. um, and, and you see this um, squad move through and order them to go inside. And when they don't go inside right away, uh, they say, oh, light them up and start shooting mm -hmm. these people on their own yep. porch. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, 10 years ago, I think maybe 15 in the Rodney King riots, there was a big interest in crowd control technology. And they said oh. water cannons are better. And what's even better is just loudspeakers and playing loud music. This will disperse people far better than rubber bullets and all this. But I, you don't need tear gas and all this stuff. But that just seems to have been forgotten. And they've gone back to this Vietnam era crowd control stuff when there are I better mean, choices. It's well, kind I of messed up just because to me it, it, there's so much similarity between what our government is doing right now uh to protesters and what the chinese government is doing to hong kong protesters and they've condemned that up 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 and down up one side and down the other but then go ahead and do the same thing mm -hmm. yeah one thing I mean, I it's was great was the the head of iran just protested america's abuse of our citizens and said we should stop battering our citizens and i said man yeah, so did china they said the exact same thing back to us we got it coming our moral high ground is looking pretty weak these days anyway uh the octopus scanner i saw some about this yeah this was a interesting read uh, yeah. so malicious people put stuff into a, a repo uh but it has to be uh, it targeted NetBeans, the ID, the Java IDE. Yep. <laughs> Someone would download and they would compile their code. At that point is when the malware would run and infect the system, uh, ultimately installing a rat. Yep. And I thought this is basically a supply chain attack, which is the big issue. You, you download something from Git and use it, and you don't audit it, of course. And so how do you know it's not full of malware? And it very well could be. Mm -hmm. And after that, I think it affects everything you make. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a pretty obvious. Uh, yeah. This is a big issue. I've been hearing more and more about it on the Enterprise Class podcast for the last year. Supply chain attacks are very scary because how do you audit your supply chain? So Amazon has been announcing they're going to make a coronavirus-free supply chain for material objects. And what people need is like a safer code repository where you can like force your developers to use the official Microsoft code repository where everything is actually like tested and you have some reason to believe it's not full of malware. Microsoft is implementing their own code repository. What could go wrong? Well, in principle, it could be good if they scan it well enough and stuff that might, I saw an ice diagram that showed the, uh, the level of viruses on Microsoft operating system is much less than others now because they have all these controls and stuff, you know, that's what you have to do. That's what most enterprises do. That's what my military job does. They force you to use nothing but Microsoft everything. 
which is usually a more secure solution than letting people just put in junk from everywhere. Anyway, so then we've got uh, David McCaddy. McCaddy, yeah. Okay. Uh, so David McCaddy. Uh, so where did I start? So so this is very recent. This um, uh, happened over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, so McCaddy um, uh, owned a barbecue restaurant uh, next to a, a parking lot where the police shot and killed him uh, during the protests. And uh, this article goes into who he was. Um, and apparently he was just this, this really great upstanding guy who would give out free meals to anyone who would, um, you know, who would want, well, want free meals to the cops, right? It, right and, and to the cops too, which, yeah. which is just, um, but, um, um, do we know how he got shot? Any information? As, as, as far as anyone knows, it's just the uh, police, you know, cracking down on the protesters and just. And shot them. Just shooting, shooting. Yeah, very yeah, we're, really, we're really itching to use live rounds uh, yeah. there and elsewhere. And this is, of course, going to be a big issue if Trump actually is able to carry through with his threat to send in, like, military from out of your state that will just charge in, and they will have no ability to tell the good guys from the bad guys and no connection to your community. I remember in the Telegraph riots I was in in the 90s, it was kind of funny. The, the, the um, People's Park protesters would loot all the corporate stores, but the local stores, I remember uh, yeah. Bond what Bonnie's Pizza, they just put up a big sign saying riot special, 25 cent slices. People go get a slice and then go out and burn down the chain stores more. Because there's a lot of like people know with their local businesses, there's people who they regard as good people, but outsiders wouldn't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, well, it is a crazy time and it's, I'm glad you bring these things up. So it's, but I think there's nothing we can do about any of this except vote Trump out of office. Until then, there's no hope of the slightest improvement. Of and it's it's not just. I mean, this this happens under Democrats. It happens under Republicans. We really need to change the, um, the way that we we handle law enforcement in this country. I'm not saying we we should just you need, abolish. You need, new, you need a new culture. We do. Yeah. Even upending law enforcement doesn't end race. You know, upending law enforcement doesn't change. For example, when I go to a conference and people look me up and down and go, "You're brown. What are you doing here?" Yeah, oh. and it's also a, a systemic issue from local all the way up to uh, all the way up to federal. Yeah, it, it's not just law enforcement. It's just not one. It's an entire culture shift that has to happen. That's that has not happened. Well, it hasn't happened yet, but in a way, this is how it happens. You have these situations that are so extreme that they radicalize people, and people, uh, you know, oppose it. So, in the backlash after Trump, there might be an improvement. I mean, that's, that's the hope. That's, I mean, but that, that they've said that so many times in the past. Yes. Well, but it has yeah. improved. That's why, I mean, I thought some, like if you look at what the original Freedom Riders put up with, it was 10 times worse. The fact is they did improve things significantly with the civil rights movement in the 60s. And what we're hoping, perhaps we can be in another step forward here. It's going to have to be drastic, though, because it's. I feel like we're backsliding. Well, we are, but we're not going anywhere back to where they were in the time of the Freedom Riders. It was 10 times worse. And, and so this is, this is how society improves. You, you take a couple steps forward, and then you slide back, and then you take a couple more steps forward. Anyway, this... Um, since you people brought up all the politics, I figured the only thing I could do to be even more crazy is to bring up religion. So, because um, I have to keep my position as the wild man here. So, uh, the, so here's the Episcopal bishop. This is what Trump did last night. He announced a big event where he was going to explain, announce something at like 3 or 3.15 in California time. So I tuned in and waited like everybody else for half an hour to an empty microphone with all the reporters saying, where is he? That was intentional. So you keep all the press there. Well, the explosion well, took, happening in the background. Well, they took tear gas and flashbangs and dispersed the crowd before the curfew, the nonviolent crowd, so he could be protected by lines of military people as he walked to the church to pose with the Bible. And he, all I saw is he walked off and said, now I'm going to go pay my respects to something. And he's gone. And I say, 
I don't know what that's about. I guess I'll read about it later, which is what I did. So he went and posed holding a Bible upside down in front of the church, which was boarded up because the night before they had started a small file and partly damaged the church as part of a protest. So he wanted to try to get the evangelical Christian vote. So I don't know how stupid he thinks evangelical Christians are. I used to be one. And I don't know if I would have ever fallen for this. I mean, a guy like Trump, when I was a Christian, I would never have had any issue with totally condemning a guy like Trump just for his manifest immorality. (laughs) Seriously. I mean, how is this guy any kind of Christian hero? (laughs) And how is posing in front of a church with a Bible and not even saying anything? supposed to win over the evangelical vote, but he thinks he's winning something this way. And I thought it was funny, you look at Trump's religion. So this is the pastor that supports Trump, along with, of course, uh, Billy Graham and his son that are totally corrupt. But he, um, here's the pastor that supports Trump that gave the prayer at his invocation. And she is like the modern Zig Ziglar. You guys are probably old enough to know Zig Ziglar. But I am she, aware of Zig Ziglar. But she's one of these- uh, I'm a guru. She, she, um, she sends out prayer alerts, and I like this one here. Trump, she's an agent sent by God to get Trump elected. She has every authority to declare the White House as holy ground because she was standing there, and anywhere she stands is holy ground. This is, so what this, I, is I, this is a pretty amazing interpretation of Christianity. <laughs> it's really kind of brilliant, though, when you think about it, because, like, you know, it's sort of a shrewd business move. You target the populations with the highest capacity for cognitive dissonance. I mean, well, I don't know. Anyway, but I so she's some views of everything Christianity truly stands for. I'm a Pentecostal, so this like stuff like this bugs me to no avail. Yeah, what's that? you? You're in a Christian group, you say? Yeah, I'm a Pentecostal. Well, Pentecostal, yeah. yeah. I used to be one of them. I've been through a lot of Christian sects. And oh, this well, is, you're, uh, not a big, you're not a big fan of, of people using fake Christianity to serve no, their... Um, not at all. Well, you know who had a lot to say about this was Jesus. At his time, yeah. the established, mm-hmm. the established <laughs> religious authorities were just like this, corrupt as hell, in bed, <laughs> with, in bed with the government, and he said, you know, have nothing to do with them. <laughs> yep. Right. Yes, he did. Yeah, I mean, I just can't, I, the, the stories of Jesus that I just can't get over as an adult, and I, I totally missed this as a kid, yeah. was his rant against, against money changers. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I, didn't, have a, I have a great story about that <laughs> that I was just about to say, actually. Oh, go on. I'm a, I'm, I am from the land of the megachurch. In fact, I'm from the place where the very first, uh, one of the very first megachurches was. And I um, had a friend who was... Um, Egyptian, um, and he'd grown up as a Coptic Christian um, in in Egypt, and uh, it was so funny because he went to the megachurch with a a mutual friend one Sunday, and he comes back, and he's just flipping out, and I'm like, Rami, what's up? And he's like, I went in there, and first, first I go into the church, I see a Starbucks, and then, and then the second thing I see is they've got an ATM and a mini bank. He goes, they put the money changers directly inside the temple, (laughs) literally. Yeah, yeah, well, this is obviously, this, this is actually a really old thing. There was, if you study church history, there was the Manichaean heresy, and this is another very repetitive heresy, all the way back to ancient Jewish tradition, that if God, if you're righteous, God will make you rich. If you're poor, that must be because you're sinful and God is punishing you, which is the whole, the whole prosperity gospel. Yep. Yeah, that, and she's, she's clearly way over there. She even promises that if you donate to her, God will reward you with more wealth. So it's just fantastically yeah, corrupt. Knows. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that these are the tar- these are the groups that, that Trump would target to get on his side because, you know, clearly they have a huge capacity for believing total bullshit. Yeah. And and it's um very much like him running his fake university and his fake military charity. It's it's just another con man artist uh, lining up with him to get the money. And you know, anyway, it's surprising to me. Now, there are some intelligent religious 
right people that have written about this and they have said something which I thought was a pretty good argument. They said, it's no different than like the Pharaoh in the Bible. You have a totally corrupt evil leader, but God is in charge and God might be using him for some greater good. And I said, that means not that you actually admire him or think that he represents any good thing, but that he's part of God's plan. And that made some sense to me, but it's not a reason to vote for him, I would think. And so I was sort of glad to see the Episcopals totally come out against him. The, the woman in charge, this Episcopal bishop. I mean, the Episcopals have been pretty cool in my experience. And yes. uh, she, she totally says, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with this guy. We, he didn't, we don't endorse this. We don't want him using our church as a prop. So, so this was an Episcopal church? That's yeah, Episcopal, Episcopal church, yeah. And he's trying to appeal to evangelicals? Yeah, yeah, because that makes sense. Yeah, he doesn't under, yeah, that's how much he understands uh, faith and, and the families within the big tree. Oh, the evangelicals still hate Episcopals. I thought that was out of style. I mean, everybody used to hate the Catholics. I thought they kind of. Um, well, I mean, Episcopalianism is almost like Catholicism light. It's Catholic I mean, light, yeah. It's Catholic people light. still hate the Catholics. I thought when I was a kid, they told you, they taught me at my little church that everybody else was going to hell. All the Catholics, all the Jews, everybody's going to hell except our little group of 200 people. That was, I thought that kind of went out of style. No, no it's still around. There's, there's still interfamily, uh, I, I call it interfamily issues. I thought mm -hmm. the only ones that were still like that was the Southern Baptists. They've always been like that. No. They moved Jimmy Carter out. No. It's still there. Okay. There were, my family had just like both Methodists and Episcopalians and they, have a lot of disagreements. Uh, it's almost like they're two different religions, uh, well, which is mind blowing to me. You know, my last attempt to be Christian, I went to the Methodist church. Now, if there's anybody that is determined not to offend you, it's the Methodist. They even have the doctrine of universal salvation. Everybody gets to go to heaven no matter what you do. And I sat there and I couldn't stand it. I said, you know, if I can't stand the Methodists, I might as well give up because there's nobody more bland and inoffensive. Yeah, well, you know, what is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I thought we might as well bring up that part of the this madness. And now we got fake stuff. That's what we need. Yeah. It even worse than it actually is. <laughs> so things, well, actually, that, that's a great segue from the <laughs> uh, very expensive uh, fake photo op that we just talked about. Um, yeah. I think it's important to remember that there's a ton of BS going around right now. And in situations like this, uh, really kind of um, encourage more fake news uh, to yep. happen because things are happening so quickly that it's it's hard or impossible to do fact checking things are just constant there's this constant cascade of um, events and uh, with all the chaos you know people are uh, you know nothing would pretty much nothing would shock me right now Yep. So I think that that also kind of creates a good um, a good opportunity for um, those who are promulgating. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's unintentional uh, for those who are promulgating, um, you know, these fake news stories. So it's just another reminder to double and triple check um, the things that we're hearing and seeing right now because it, it's. Um, you know, there's more astroturfing going on than inside a ballpark and, and just constant mm -hmm. dog whistle politics happening um, right now. So, Well, it's a career path. You could work for the Russians if you get good at this stuff. Just, a, just sort of a PSA to, to be aware and double and triple check. Yeah, Thank yeah. Reality is so surreal that yeah. nothing would seem too crazy anymore. And this one I thought was hilarious when Urban put this up. So Amtrak got hacked. Boy, this is going to affect both Amtrak customers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, does somebody still ride Amtrak? Who in the world? This is like all the videos of people with a wall full of books behind them. I like books on paper. It, it, is, it does get a lot of heavier use on the East Coast. Okay. <laughs> well, a lot of people use it to commute between, like, in, through the Eastern Seaboard Corridor, Boston, New York, uh, D.C. Okay. Well, I wrote it to Sacramento with my friend 20 years ago. I mean, I wrote it, yeah, I wrote it to go to Davis. Yep. So, usernames and passwords. 
and apparently not yep, encrypted yep. or anything, or hashed, I guess. Not. Well, I would assume the Amtrak computer system is probably running COBOL from 1975. I mean, right, right. Yeah, they are saying no financial data, credit card info, or social security numbers were compromised, and that they're going to do a complimentary one year of experience. Identity works at no oh, charge. Oh, great. Sign, or, sign right. right up for that. Yeah. That identity stuff, that identity protection supposedly does nothing from what I can tell. Oh, oh, uh, there's, a, there's the actual thing. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Did we ever find out how many records at least? It. I didn't see it. Right here. there. So click on rail service head. Rail oh, rail service. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is their. Uh, and then go to page two of that document. Okay. This is the letter I guess they sent people. Yeah. Okay. And then go to page uh, two. Well, I'm having difficulty achieving page two. Uh, and then, wait. Okay. Here's some kind of yeah. page control. Um, that, that's the zoom. What does it, this do? Yes. Oh, that there. Okay. What you can. Uh, look, look at the acti activation code. All the way up. Go. Go. Just go a little higher. There you go. A, B, C, D. <laughs> There's a good sign. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad they did that. So, well, maybe that's just a placeholder, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, you know, I just sure you enroll by August. That's a good start. But did they say how many records? I never saw anything about how no, many. No, they're not saying how many records. I thought they were required to, but breach notification laws, but... Me too. <laughs> me too. Me too. Well, you know, I remember when um, they blamed me for the breach of the uh, Louisiana Health Service, they just totally issued a notification that was all full of lies. And it sort of reminds me of everything at City College. You can just put up anything and the administration says, okay, then you did it. Nobody actually looks at it, see if you did it right. Getting you to do it at all is as far as they go in compliance. Anyway, well, that's good, clean fun. <laughs> All right. Are there any more comments? Well, what gonna... a crazy time to be alive. It is. We can all tell our grandchildren we lived in interesting times. I'm going to stop the recording.